Kill me, Lord. Okay, welcome to the Open Door Baptist Church's Sunday message. Uh, thank, we thank you for joining us today, and let's begin in prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for bringing us here today. Lord, we pray that the Holy Spirit came down through me, that I may give a, a, a good message for your glory. Lord, I pray for those people that have suffered bereavement or loss, and those people who around the world have lost somebody, Please comfort their families. I ask for this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Okay. Now the Lord said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. So God's going to hide himself from the people. So no more appearances to them, no more uh, whirlwinds, no more coming down in the middle of the tabernacle stuff. Basically because whatever he did, it didn't work. The people would not believe. So what was the point in him going to all that effort if they were going to do that? I'm going to hide my face. For they are a very froward generation. That means difficult. Uh, children in whom is no faith. So what's God looking for? God's looking for people to believe in him, have faith and believe. Now that's very difficult when trying times come. But it's also the final step of being a great person. Now, there's a lot of people out there, uh, you know, they go to church. They do good charity work. They do good things in their life. But they just need to take that final step and have faith. So that is the final step to believe. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to read on. Jesus uh, touched their eyes, saying, the blind men that came to him, because two, two blind men were following him around, and he said to them, do you believe that I can heal you? Believe you that I can do this? And they said, we do. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. So, did their faith help the situation? Yes. It was because they believed. Now, uh, with Christians, we need, for some reason, this is uh, lessened in the churches, that part where they believe. So you ask in prayer, believing. That last part of the believing, that final step seems to be missing. Let's do an example. Okay. There's a cent certain centurion's servant. So this centurion cares about this servant. It's not his son, brother, mother, sister, nothing. Just the servant. Okay? Not that there's anything wrong with being a servant. <laughs> okay? Who was dear unto him. He was sick and ready to die. Okay? But when he never even met him, he heard of Jesus. He heard of Jesus. That's all that, that, that's all that he needed. Okay. He sent unto him the elders of the Jews. So this guy is in charge. He sends the, the, the top people in the Jewish community. He goes, go uh, and, and speak to this Jesus. Okay, Beseeching him to come and heal his servant. So you top Jewish people, the best of the best, the highest up, the highest rank, you, he's commanding them to, to go and beg this guy, beseech him, plead with him to come with him. So what are these elders doing? Who's higher up here? The centurion knows who's higher up. He gets, he, he gets the top people to go down to Jesus. So let's see where, where this goes. So not only is the centurion correctly rank him, they came to Jesus, they besought him instantly, saying, This centurion's worthy for whom you should do this. He's worthy. He loveth our nation and has built us a synagogue. Did you know that? That was the true Now, 
this guy has is he, he's a they've conquered the Romans have conquered the Jews they don't have to build them anything especially not uh, you know the, the pagan religions back then and um, you know Jupiter and Mars and all that you don't believe them this is a monotheistic religion what he has done is amazing this guy loves the Jewish nation so much that he built them a synagogue so they love this guy. And these are the elders begging Jesus. So the, the centurions correctly ranked everyone. Then Jesus went with him, and when he was not far from the house, with them, he doesn't actually see the centurion. I know it's in the films, but he doesn't actually see the centurion, if you, if you read it properly. Jesus went with him, and he said, not far from the house. The centurion sent friends to him, saying, Lord, trouble not thyself. He addresses him as the Lord. So this, without even seeing him, just because he heard about him. Okay, so we need that similar type of faith today. Um, okay, don't trouble yourself, because I am not worthy that thou shouldest then under my roof. Now this guy's probably got a nice house, right? People like to show off their nice house. He doesn't. You know, I'm, I know I've, I'm in charge. Yeah. <laughs> he, he orders the elders about like they're nothing, you know. Go do this, go do that. But this guy, uh, you know, look, look at the reverence. Yeah. Wherefore, neither thought I myself worthy to come to thee. But say in a word, and my servant shall be healed. Who is this guy? <laughs> we, we need this in the churches, amen? We need this. Okay, so what, what, what's going on here? This guy has ended up more righteous. Now, the, the others have seen miracles in front of them. You've healed a man blind from birth. You've done all these things. Cast out devils and all this. And wouldn't believe... Some did, some didn't. But this guy, this, you know. Okay, so, what do we learn from this? I've heard certain people say, don't, you know, don't have anything to do with people from that country. You know, they're all uh, bad. You don't want to put those people in. You don't want to. And you're sitting there, you're thinking to yourself, Show me a country on the planet, or a people group, a people group, because I don't like calling them races, it's not true, okay? So show me a people group where all the people are good, and then show me a people group where all the people from that are bad. You can't do it, right? There's good and bad Greeks, Turks, good and bad Chinese, good and bad Americans, good and bad. there's good and bad from all people groups around the world. Now, these guys are Romans. Talk about hating. And this guy comes forward and he's righteous. So there's no nothing here. So how does Jesus... Uh, yeah, you can't. Oh, you know. Okay. Um, here we go. For I also am a man under authority. Who's he saying Jesus is? A man under authority. Wow, he's recognizing all this, okay, and humbling himself so low, okay, having under me soldiers. Let me just check that the feed's okay. Uh, yeah, we're, we're okay. Okay, having under me soldiers, I say to someone, go and he goes, and to another, come and he comes, and to my servant, do this, and, and he doeth it. Okay. Jesus heard these things, he marvels at him, he turns him, him about, he's going, <laughs> and, to, and to the people that followed him and said, I have not found so great a faith, no, not in Israel. Now the people that follow him, <laughs> that follow Israel, he's going, this guy's got more faith than you do. I've never found this much faith. Okay, they that were sent, uh, returning to the house, they found the servant hole that had been sick. So the miracles performed because of the faith. Okay. 
Now, we're going to do something different today that we normally do, okay? I'm going to talk about the shield of faith before we do it, okay? The shield of faith is this. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall uh, be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, everyone knows the armor of God uh, part. So, this part here, what's it saying? It's saying that in this world, people are going to attack your faith, okay? Now, we're going to do a little experiment to try and do that as well, but it's not going to work, all right? So, uh, when you go to school, when your children go to school, when people go out into the world, what's the first thing they're going to do? They're going to try and take that away, right? The first thing people do when they go to school, the world is millions of years old. The Bible says it's 6,000 years old. You know? See? Uh, your faith is wrong. So, that shield of faith, it's not true. The oldest civilizations we've got are 5,000 years old that they can find. Okay, the max, a little bit more than that. Uh, but that's a separate video that I've done, so we won't go into that today. Okay, so let's test your faith here. I'm going to quote, uh, this is, because if you go to the internet, you're going to find loads of, you know, a hundred mistakes in the Bible. Okay, and these are all mistakes, you know, and that means the Bible's wrong. So let me assure everyone watching, there are no mistakes in the bible but we're going to try one of these uh one of their many mistakes you know we've tried this before let, let's have a go again so jerkin was 18 years old when he began to reign and he reigned in jerusalem eight uh, three months so this is kings versus chronicles later on in chronicles it says uh jerkin was 25 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 11 years so which is right 18 years or 25 years. See, there's a mistake in the Bible. See? Do you believe there's a mistake in the Bible? No. Okay, so this is the actual quote. If you look at the names, Joachim and Joachim are two different people. So Joachim slept with his fathers, and Joachim, his son, reigned in his stead. So you see it there. It's a simple way to people to attack your faith. But if you read it, you see, they never read the verses. Okay, If you look deep, there are no mistakes. So I don't know how many people will watch this. Uh, it's an advantage of doing a video. But whoever thought there was a mistake in the Bible, it wasn't. So we passed that first test. There were no mistakes in the Bible. If you think there are any, email me. And I'll show you the exact verses. Okay. Now, uh, Peter comes, uh, Jesus walks on water, one of the most famous miracles. Peter walks out to him. He says, he says, Lord, can I come? And he comes. But what happens is a little bit of turbulence happens, like turbulence in people's lives. And that turbulence makes his faith fail. Okay. And it, it rocks and it shakes and some bad things that happen in your life might rock your faith. How can there be a God if this happens, if that happens? You know, would a, a nice God send a plague like this one? You know, it's not true. Don't let anything rock your faith. It's very precious to God. Okay? So Jesus stretches out his hand when he begins to sink, catches him and says, O thou of little faith, Wherefore did thou doubt? Why did you doubt me? If I was walking on the water and you saw that, why did you lose faith? Because a little bit of trouble come. Things looked a little bit stormy. So let's remember that message. Okay. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees. We've all read these parts. Okay. It says you admitted the weightier matters of the law. So the most important things in the law, you admitted them. You forgot about them. Judgment, mercy, and what? Faith. So what's the point of the church? The point of the church is to strengthen people's faith. It's going to be rocking. You're going to have people walking in sometimes, and they're going to be, uh, you know, I met, met this pastor once, and he goes, well, that part might not be in the Bible. And, you know, we're not sure about that. He'd lost his faith on that part. Okay. 
And I remember that day I said to him, who told you that it shouldn't be in the Bible? Who told you? Who made you doubt all this? Now, if that pastor's doubting, well, it ended up not being a real pastor, but the point is, if he was doubting, what will happen to the congregation? The congregation will lose their faith. So it begins at the pastor there. If he doesn't have faith, the congregation won't. He doesn't believe in, you know, all the parts of the Bible. He doesn't believe, uh, he doesn't, believe that God's there or believe that God can save or believe that these things can happen, then it will, it will filter down. Okay? So behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. Now they've stressed uh, Peter's house here. They've destroyed his house and lowered down a man to be. But Jesus heals them after what? Seeing their faith. He sees their faith. Okay, uh, being, be of good cheer, thy sins are forgiven thee. So are, are sicknesses sometimes sent as a, a punishment for sins? The answer is yes. But Jesus will forgive that. So sometimes you can have uh, an affliction on your body, and that will go away. I've had one. Uh, other people, we prayed for them, they had them, and they went away. So can you be healed? Yeah. Sometimes because of sins, but it also because of... Um, if you read the Gospel of Luke, Luke was a doctor, and you can tell because he describes all the diseases, and he describes when it was uh, uh, from a demon or from a natural sickness. So we can see that people are afflicted by you know natural things. It's not because they've sinned. It's not because they've sinned. Let's, let's get that straight right now. If someone's afflicted, it's not always because they've sinned. That's not the way it is. Okay, can God help them? Yes. Will God help them every time? No, if it's not according to his will. Sometimes that person is taken up early because they were a good person. And sometimes the sickness is a way to... How do I explain this in a better way? Oh, forgive my words, church. But what it is, is sometimes ready to go, someone's ready to go to heaven. They're ready to be with the Lord. And if they've got a sickness that's incurable, you know, they might have time to say goodbye to all their family rather than a quick death when you don't get a chance. So sometimes, uh, if people are angry with me for saying this, please forgive me. But sometimes it's better uh, for people to have a chance to say goodbye. It's not because they've done anything bad. It's because it's time for them to go and be with the Lord. Okay? So when the multitude saw that, they marveled and glorified God, which had given such power unto men. So there was a reason for this. People were marveling, they were coming to God, it was working. Okay, <clears throat> so there came a certain rule, ruler worshipping him, like the centurion. See, the centurion took that final step of faith and this person took a final step of faith as well. He was a ruler. He could have done other things. Okay. But he comes to Jesus, humbles himself. He says, my daughter now is even dead. But come, lay thy hand on her and she shall live. Has this guy got faith or what? Now, we want this level of faith. This level of faith isn't wrong. This level of faith is perfect. We believe that Jesus can do anything, that God can do anything. There's a, a movement. There are some very great people that I watch their videos. I, I think they're fantastic, fantastic. Uh, they give great messages and they really know their Bible. But some of those people, they don't believe in miracles anymore. And they teach people that miracles had stopped after the apostles. Now, I'm sitting there thinking, how can you understand certain parts of the Bible the way you do, which is from the Holy Spirit, but not know that miracles are still possible? When did miracles stop? I've seen many in my life. Yeah. 
yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah, I, I went blind for three days when I was a kid. You remember that? Obviously, you remember it. Uh, so, God can do anything. There's a, a lady that comes to our church. The doctors couldn't find out what was wrong with the kid. Nobody could find out what was wrong with the kid. Me and Dominic, uh, we prayed uh, with a nice lady, and suddenly the cure came about. Okay, it wasn't from us. We didn't do anything. Uh, we had nothing to do with it. But uh, it just so happened that someone else had suffered that same thing and then said to her, why don't you take this? And the, the kid was uh, healed. Okay, so yes, prayer works. Yes, miracles happen. Okay. So here we go. Now, behold, a woman which was diseased had an issue of blood 12 years came to her and touched the hem of his garment. For she said within herself, within herself, nobody told her, if I may but touch his garment, I shall be whole. Okay? So she believed her faith inside her. And Jesus says to her, um, so she thought he, Jesus was going to be angry. He goes, virtual to... <coughs> and he says to the apostles, because the apostles are going, the crowds aren't leaving you alone. He's going, who touched me? The apostles are looking at them. Can't you see the, the, the crowd that's around you? So she thinks Jesus is going to be angry with her. Now, this part has been cut out of the modern Bibles. The part where, I know, you know, in the effort to make Jesus not look like a nice guy, they've cut this part out. But it's very firmly there in the Bible and in the ancient scriptures, okay? When he saw it, he said, daughter, be of good comfort. Calm down. Be of good comfort, it says. Your faith has made thee whole. Not I did it. See how amazing I am and stuff like that. Your faith made you whole. Can your faith make you whole? Yes. But, you know, Mario, you... yes. You have to believe. And that's the point of this. It's that final step. You've got to believe. It's great that you go to church. It's great that you sing in the church. It's great that you preach in the church. It's great that you give that message to other people. But do you believe? Have you taken that final step? Okay, here we go. Uh, now, this is something that you're going to face when, you, when you're a Christian, you're going to come up against this. This situation that you're about to see. Okay, now, when you come up against a situation, deal with it the same way you're about to see Jesus deal with it. Okay? So he said to them, uh, okay, so... The, girl, the girl's dead. Okay, so this is what happens. Um, Jesus says, give place. Get out of the way. <laughs> Get out of the way. For the maid is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. So are people going to laugh at you? When you're, oh, you're a Christian. Ha, ha, ha. You know, you mean this disease can't be cured. Ha, ha, ha. Stuff like that. You're going to face this. What does Jesus do? When the people were put forth, he went in. Get these unbelievers away from me. Then I'll perform the miracle. Why? They don't deserve to see it if they don't believe. They don't deserve to be here and see the miracle. And they just don't deserve to be in the room. If you're going to be a schooner and stuff like that, get out. When the people were put out, he went in. He took her by the hand and the maid arose. Another miracle. Now, this miracle uh, took place on the way to that miracle before. So it's this one. Uh, then this miracle takes place. Okay? Uh, so when Jesus part, this is the part. It says, two blind men followed him crying. Now, you can imagine being blind in those days. There's not much help for you or anything like that, is there? It must have been a terrible one. So all of, all of us will be crying at this point. Okay? Saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. 
So when he came into the house, the two blind men came to him. Jesus said to them, Believe ye that I am able to do this. Do you all believe that I'm able to do this? They says to him, Yea, Lord. Okay. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, be it to you. Because you believed and you had the faith that I could do this, let it happen. Now this is the part I wanted to make today. We need this back in the churches, this, this uh, uh, faith, this belief. We want it back. And we want you to take it to your families, take it to the, this belief, believe that these things can happen. We want that again. Okay? Uh, their eyes was, was open, and Jesus straight recharged him, saying, see, not a pun intended, see that no man know it. Now, how is that possible? If people knew that the people were blind, how could they not know that seeing them uh, see around? But the whole point of it was, the whole reason, does anyone know why Jesus said this? Close, but basically the whole point is for other people to have faith. Their faith isn't tested yet, and that test has to come. Your test sometimes has to come. You'll be put in impossible situations where you need God's help. Like Moses, backed up against the sea, God put him in that situation where there was no choice but to trust God. Only a miracle could get you out of that. And sometimes in your life, only a miracle can get you out of these situations. And we, we all have these situations. Okay. So who does Jesus have a go at here? Okay. When Jesus perceived, he said to them, Ye have little faith, why reason ye among yourselves because you brought no bread? Again, he says to them, Jesus said unto them, Verily I say to you, if you have faith, and doubt not. So that part is essential as well. Doubting not. I don't doubt that that guy can be healed. I don't doubt that my medical condition could be healed. That that child can be healed. That that situation I'm in can be, you know, got rid of. I don't doubt. So get rid of that doubt that's in your mind as well. Okay. You shall not only say unto, uh, do this which is done to the fig tree. But also, if you should say to that mountain, and there are many mountains in people's lives, be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and it shall be done. And he said to them, why is it you're so fearful? How is it you have no faith? Now, who's he talking to? His apostles. His followers. And he's probably wondering that today about his followers. Why are you so fearful? Why don't you have faith? Why do you keep doubting me? Uh, do we do it? Yes. Who has doubt sometimes? You know, not on my faith about Jesus, but who has doubt that God can get you out of these situations? Everyone has them. It's time for that to end. It's time for that faith to come back. That final step. Okay. Now, very curiously, the apostles have performed miracles already. And he still says to Peter, I've prayed for you that your faith doesn't fail. Peter, who saw all these things, he's the third apostle or fourth apostle, depending, uh, you know. So you see it there. When you're converted, what should you do? Strengthen your brethren. What is our job? Strengthen the brethren. Your brothers and sisters in the faith. Kind of like what I'm trying to do today. You're trying to strengthen the brethren. Now they're going to have, uh, they're going to be going through rough times. Uh, I'll never forget that pastor that came over. And he says to me, if you ever want me to pray with you, I goes, I don't really, we, you know, if you need me to strengthen you and stuff like that. And I goes, I almost never really needed it, to be honest. I've never been wavering stuff like that. But I think some people, I think some people do. Some people, you know, they need, they need their strengthening all the time. They need that faith replaced. Now, everyone's read the parts that I'm reading out in the Bible. 
But sometimes to read them a second, a third, a fourth time sometimes helps. It, it does sometimes help. So, Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So, he was filled with faith, and that did the, uh, that helped do the miracles. And you see it there. Okay. Confirming these souls among the divine and exhorting them to continue in the faith. So confirming the souls of the disciples, which is what we should do. Confirm the souls of the disciples, all the people that follow Jesus. Exhort them to continue in the faith. And that, explain to them this. We must, through much tribulation, enter the kingdom of God. We must through great tribulation. So if you see someone suffering, it doesn't mean they were a bad person. It means that God's proving their faith. They're going through that test, which they're supposed to go through to keep their faith. They've earned their right to go to heaven. They haven't had it all easy and all everything's right. Because you wouldn't need faith then. What's the most times, we've all done this, how many times you know, when we were younger, maybe, did we turn away from God and then come back to him when something bad happened in our lives? Sometimes the, the trials, the tribulations, they bring us close to God. If that's the case, let it be so. Please, always keep me close to Jesus. Keep us close to Jesus, whatever it takes. Because being away from him could be the worst one. Okay? Now, This applies very much to all Christians. Let it sink in. For those that get it, great, fantastic. For those that don't, let's read this together and, you know, go back to where we should be. You see, for us, for unto us was the gospel preached. It's preached to us. As well as unto them. But the word preached didn't profit them. It didn't do them any good. Why? It not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Again, I've said the same thing twice now. I don't want to bell aboard a point, but let's say it together just to get it right. The Bible that you've heard, mix it with faith inside yourself. Okay? And then it will profit you a lot more. That belief that uh, anything's possible, that God can do anything, that God's on your side. Because he is. Jesus says, I will be with you all way. It doesn't say always, it says all way, all the way. Sometimes people don't think that Jesus is next to them, Jesus is with them. It's not true. Don't let the stuff that happens in your life, don't let children, especially when they get go to school, or go out into the world, uh, don't let people lose that faith. It's the most precious thing, that belief in God. And it really can do powerful things. I've seen them myself. So let's hopefully, guess what I forgot to do? Email. That's right. I always forgot to do that. I know, shaking your head. I deserve it. But let's do that. Let's do that. So, if you have any questions, email us at the Open Door Baptist Church. Ask me what you want to ask me for. If there's a subject you want me to preach on or do a message on, I can do that. If there's a part on the Bible that you find difficult to understand, we can go through that together. I'll explain that in the email. Uh, I'll even do a, a message uh, on that. 
if there's parts of Revelation, sometimes people get stuck on Revelation. We can do that. We can do that with you. So uh, let's end in prayer now. Okay. My God in heaven, I believe that you can do anything. The people watching this video, the people out in the world, I ask that you show them, not more than you've shown them already, but I pray that they have faith in you and that comes back. That they see these miracles, not for their glory, but for yours. I hope that when people see the miracles in their life, because they will, I pray that they give glory to you first. They give a message to you first. And they tell everybody, God did this in my life. I pray for those people that need those miracles. They need to see those miracles and they need that strength. God be with those people. Send your angels to help those people. I ask these things for the glory of my Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Uh, please contact us if you have any questions. Thank you.